From the crossroads of America in the Hoosier state of Indiana, this is Get In, the podcast focused on the unfolding stories and extraordinary innovation happening in the heartland today. I'm Nate Spengel, head of community at Powder Keg, and I will be one of your hosts for today's conversation. I'm joined in studio, as always, by CEO of Elevate Ventures, Christopher Toaf Day. Hello. And Matt Hunkler, CEO of Powder Keg. That's me. Well, Envision Rally is an open source experience, an open source festival. On the show today, we're going to unpack some secrets about hosting amazing in-person events. Those topics include how to get started with in-person events, differentiating your event from the noise, and how to maintain momentum post-event. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Let's roll. Great I think the, the first thing we need to hit on is for our, our visual listeners, watchers, we have our first startup tea on. Startup tea, I'm going to say. We're all repping Rally. If we were all attendees at Rally, Tope was a great presenter at Rally, as well as Matt. And just want to say, if you want to get your brand represented on a show, send us three largest to 16 tech addressed to Powder Keg or Nate. And we will give you guys a, a 30 second, maybe a minute. If you're one of the early ones, we'll give you a, a, maybe a minute and a half shout out mm. on the show. I'm also rocking my new shoe day hat. It's a non What is it? New shoe day, NSD. It is a nonprofit based here in Indy, all focused on supporting positive mental health through movement. I that show is up, awesome. I show up to Run Club every Wednesday, 5.30, and my man Casey said, dude, take a hat. I know you always wear a hat on the podcast. I love it. Money. <laughs> Shout um, out to Casey and New Shudo. New Shoe Day. New Shoe Day. Because there's nothing like that feeling Bam. if you're a runner when you get yeah. those new shoes. You're just like, I'm ready to attack the world. Hey, by the way, have you ever heard of Saucony? The brand? Yes, the I brand. Have. I have heard of Saucony. Yeah. Are you a fan? I didn't know about this brand until I was just in Australia at this uh, Global Entrepreneurship oh, yeah. Congress. It's huge. And I was with Mitch Frazier and Chelsea Linder, and we're walking through this mall in uh, Melbourne, and Mitch Frazier went crazy because it was the first Saucony store, fully branded store, like a Nike store. Yeah. Saucony store that he'd ever seen, and so we had to get some photo ops, and he Ooh. bought some paraphernalia. And said, Is that Shoes. his brand of choice? Yes, his brand of choice. Mm. He ran the marathon over there. Oh, no yeah, kidding. Heck yeah, man. It was Anna, Anna Hodowig as, as, as well. Uh, you didn't hop Hodowig. in on that one? I, I, I didn't want to show anybody. Yeah, 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 that's fair. There that's fair. So you were just at this, what was it called? Global Entrepreneurship Congress. Global Entrepreneurship Congress. How many attendees? Give us a little. Yeah, they have about uh, 2,000 attendees. It happens every two years. And the Indian Economic Development Corporation um, took over a big delegation which was awesome, and I was lucky enough to get invited. And it's so about 20 of us went over and had a big presence for Indiana, mm -hmm. for the United States. And then the IEDC did a big announcement at the end of GEC, Global Entrepreneurship Congress, that it's actually coming to Indiana in twenty in May of 2025. Oh, we're yeah. going to be the host of the yeah. Global Entrepreneurship yep. Congress. Yeah, IEDC did a great job. That's, that's, amazing. Amazing. that's amazing. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, so, so, cool. so coming back from an event, right? 2,000 people, you're literally all the way, like there's halfway across the world, down under. all the way across the world, <laughs> down under. I think that's a great segue, right? We're, what, um, two months-ish, month and a half out from Rally, or out of Rally, and I just really wanted to dive in. Matt, you've hosted hundreds, maybe thousands of events <laughs> at this hundreds, point. I think hundreds at this point. And I think there's so much talk about hosting good events and how do you make your event not be like the networking event where you show up and sling out business cards and how do you stand out? So Tof, first year conference rally, I want to go back to the beginning and we're going to give the listeners a few quick tips about going from zero to one. It's like, I have the idea for an event. How do I bring an event, a conference to life? So what is the first thing to consider when it, when wanting to dive into an event or a conference, what did you guys consider as you thought about getting into the event space? The first thing that came to my mind, the key to my mind for rally was differentiation, and the world's changed vastly in twenty years, ten years, five years, and it's just a different world out there. And this whole idea of when you bring a company to market today, this idea of sector or verticals and, and silos is dissipating quickly, mm -hmm. if not nearly gone. And so this idea of cross sector, something different, value add, takeaway value. It just seemed like it was missing. And there's a lot of great conferences out there, right? Like sure. Saster's awesome. Yeah. But it's vertical focused. And I've been to Saster many times, but it's vertical focused. And so it just felt being an entrepreneur for 30, almost 30 years in, in eight sectors, eight companies, seven verticals. I've experienced this personally. And usually if you're thinking, it's like the old thing, if you're thinking something, 
in a room, probably everybody else is too. Yep. Everybody's just afraid to say it. Yep, that's <laughs> so right. Somebody's just got to go first. That's right. I, I think that there's there's some magic there too, right? If there's one thing we've learned on this show, talking to so many different people from so many different verticals, different types of technology, different types of funding structures, yep. is that kind of cross-pollination. It, it's a lot of the magic that like made Silicon Valley take off in the first place yeah. as, a, as one of the original innovation hubs. But now when you think about all these other innovation hubs that are growing and scaling, like right here in the crossroads of America. By the way, we're the 15th fastest growing VC ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem in the world. Wow. Per I, pitch I book. saw just came that. Out, I just, just came saw out. that this morning. That's a just, huge yeah. win for Indiana, Indianapolis, the yep. whole nine yards. I don't think everybody knows that. They don't? Yeah. 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 It, one of the best kept secrets. So that, that's one of the things I, I love about Rally, too, is there's a lot of different whys. Yeah. I like this, the podcast, maybe we need a tagline, the, the worst kept secret. We're not keeping this a secret anymore. We need no. to <laughs> not keep it a secret. No. We need to blow this thing up. What were the other whys that you had when considering doing Rally? There were several high level big things that crossed my mind. One was this idea of cross sector. The second was this idea of disparate stakeholders. And you, you go back to Brad Feld's book. What was that book called? Uh, startup Community. Startup Community. And now Startup Community Way and yeah. all the follow on books. Yep. And, and I think it's it's easy to say or write about, but we really, as communities across the globe, have to intentionally think about what does that really mean? And what that, I personally believe, what that really means is disparate stakeholders, there's many different types of people that make innovation happen, that make entrepreneurial ecosystems, communities happen. And so it's not just entrepreneurs and the founders or CEOs of corporations or investors. Mm -hmm. There's a whole nother pool out there and that's our K through 12 teachers. Yeah. That is the foundations that are doing various things, various things in the ecosystem. That is our higher education leaders and professors and entrepreneurial professors and majors, like how we rethink the majors that we have in higher education. It's all of these different, our legislators, mm -hmm. our mayors, our governors, our heads of economic mm -hmm. development corporations. All of these people have a role to play and I just didn't see out there where is a place that convenes cross-sector, disparate stakeholders, one place, one time, massive takeaway value. I'm going to give a shout out to our rally cast and a few of the founders that we interviewed on stage live at rally. When asking them, they were from Argentina, Canada, San Francisco. And when I talked to them about what makes Indiana appealing to you, why are you here? Why are you pitching at rally? So many of them said, yeah, money is nice, but what about the community I get to plug into? And there was some research, like science, more scientific, like biotechnics. Their CEO said, we want to have access to research universities like IU Notre Dame, Purdue, and the access there in Indiana to have this true cross sector of all these different stakeholders that are actually engaged in the startup community is, is impactful. And in, in one degree of separation, it's easy to get from point A to point B here. And one thing I'll add to, just to like that impact, Mitch Fraser talks about this. We have the number one highest value human health company in the mm. world, Lily. Yeah, that's right. And we have the number two largest animal health company in the world. Lanker. In this, and they're literally a quarter mile apart from each other. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a Lanco, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lanco. Yeah. And it's so you got David Ricks leading one, you got Jeff Simmons leading the other, and they're literally within a quarter mile of each other. And you start adding up what you just said, Nate, right? IU, all the talent at IU, at Purdue. Rose Hallman, all of our great, Ball State, all of our great universities, Notre Dame, et cetera. And with those types of corporate citizens, that is real power. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it. one of the other things that was magical about this particular conference, one, it came together very quickly. So a lot of people think you got to have years of planning and getting stakeholders together and making sure everyone feels good about it before we start making any kind of progress. And one of the things that was really cool to see was just how quickly everyone at the table, everyone came to the table and said, yeah. we want to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the magic was another thing that Brad Feld says in his book, startup communities. Obviously he has so much experience in helping grow the Boulder startup ecosystem, being a founder of Techstars, the largest accelerator program in the world. And the number one thing for startup communities is that it has to be founder led. Yeah. And I think your past experience starting eight different companies, in seven uh, yeah. different verticals. In, se in seven different verticals, really position you well in this role as CEO at Elevate to be a founder, but in a position where you can help galvanize 
everyone together to come together and create something that was really magical over the course of three days. I, I want to dive just quick pause. Matt, you didn't host a global cross-sector innovation conference for your first event, but what you said was impactful. People think there's so much planning. What were you doing when you, when you held your first event? What were you, what was the thing that took you from, I want to bring people together to we're actually meeting. Yeah. Talk about that first event, how many people showed up and what were you thinking about? It was a little bit more humble beginnings than Tofs Road on, on events. I think we had all of maybe 12 to 15 people at our first event. 12 to 15, that's not nothing. No. But and it's not just where they just like friends of yours that are like, oh, I'm interested in this. Or were there 12 people, 12 to 15 people that were interested in a topic? Yeah, I, I think having common ground with people is a really great way to get buy-in and all 12 to 15 of these people identified as entrepreneurs and they were interested in technology some of the amazing things that are being built with software specifically and for me it was very self-serving I, I just wanted feedback on my startup that i was frankly struggling with at the time i had sold the business i started in college invested most of that in the next startup after paying off my student loans and was struggling to get that business off the ground. And so I was just like, there are smart people out there that know, know, know things better than I do. Let me just get these people in a room. I'll tell them, mm -hmm. I'll buy you a drink. Let's get together. What was magical about that event is two other guys. And it was guys because it was frankly, the people I knew it was pretty male dominated for that first event. But they were like, hey, you're getting these guys together. Why don't we, well, can I present what I'm doing and get some feedback as well? So that's how, that's literally how it started. And I didn't even think of it as an event. I just thought of it as we're, we're grabbing beers. It just so happened that there was a projector screen and three people who were pitching their startup and getting feedback. So that brings me to this kind of point. What comes first, the people or the programming when hosting a good event? The people. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It has to be the people. Because I'll, I'll push back. The first thing you said was cross-sector global innovation or global cross-sector. And that seems like programming to me. Mm -mm, so that's the, not how I the, thought about it. The though. first thing came w was people. Yeah. The first thing that went through my mind was people. It was like, so, you know, like, so we have one of the largest cohorts of port codes in the country, maybe mm -hmm. the world, right? We yeah. got like 400. And so I, I, I watched the needs of these entrepreneurs on a daily basis. I lived it for 30 years. And, and then in this current role, I, I interact with a lot of leaders of different types of organizations, right? Economic development corporations, foundations, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone is looking for connective tissue. Yep. And they're looking for connective tissue cross sector. Yeah. <laughs> with disparate stakeholders. Yep. And it's just a common theme that kept occurring. That's, it was the people. What was the first big win, right? So if it's people, then what was the first big win for yeah. you bringing rally to life? Yeah. So the first big win was I, I went to a disparate stakeholder, an economic development corporation, the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, and said, hey, I've got this idea. We, we got to do something bigger. I think it's a big gap, and but we, we need help getting this thing off the ground. Will you help with funding? And they got it right away. And they said, absolutely, we're in. And that, that was the first step. And I, I don't think either rally would have never happened or come about um, or – it certainly wouldn't have been as big as it was in year one without that disparate stakeholder getting it, stepped up to the plate and said, we will help and support. I do think that's something really unique about Indiana in particular. And I, I promise this whole uh, episode won't be an infomercial for Indiana. <laughs> Maybe but it I, will be. <laughs> but more than a decade ago, I hosted my first conference here in the state of Indiana. Now it was one track. It wasn't cross sector. It was very focused on software and it? technology. It was called powder keg. We, we were, and that's literally where the name came from was like, how do we take all of these raw resources, put it together for a multi-day conference yeah. and ignite the untapped potential that are in these kind of unvalley tech hubs, yeah. much smaller in scale, 300, 400 people, but IEDC signed on and said, we want to support this. And I didn't even think to ask them. Yep. This. I had to have other people who were sponsoring the event be like, you should really be talking to IDC because they could really get behind this. And then once they did, it was like the scale completely tipped. Are you ready to transform your brand with award-winning video content that captures your vision and connects with your audience? Check out Alchemy, the experts at building your brand using video. From story-driven social media snippets that leave a lasting impression to compelling full-length documentaries, they have got the expertise to take your brand to the next level. 
Alchemy is actually our video partner here on Get In, and they do amazing work. All of the videos across social, uh, across YouTube, all that is done by Alchemy, and, and they're an amazing partner to work with. Reach out to me, Nate, at Powder Keg, or check out alchemyfilmco.com to get connected with Alden and his team. They will take care of all of your video needs. So I want to share some numbers real quick. I want to credit David Adams, who's just an incredible individual. He ran a Perf and Turf for a number of years, and... That became Inpers, and then he went to Cincinnati. By the way, before that, he was with a unicorn before they were ever called unicorns. Nice. And then he went over to Ohio and set up 400,000 square feet of innovation space, came back, was over workforce development here, et cetera. Just an amazing individual. And so we were talking, and he was sharing some Stanford statistics. And so Stanford, right, incredible university, highly innovative, tech transfer, all these things, right? Over since inception, there's been 6,000 companies. Um, I, 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 I hope I have these stats right. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but uh, we'll very close check. to this. We'll fact check in that. 6,000 <laughs> 6, companies that have spun out of Stanford in wow. the last, since inception of when they started doing this. Yeah. 23%, 1,440, check my math, 1,440 roughly of those companies ever made a dollar. Oh my gosh. 53 have made over a million dollars. In revenue. So this is a long-term game. Yep. And so the, the economic development groups, our, our governmental bodies, our foundations, et cetera, et cetera, our universities, we need to, we have to understand that to build an entrepreneurial ecosystem, a strong community, it is a long-term game. That, that's my other big takeaway from Brad's book. I know we keep yeah. calling that out, but he studied so many startup communities. Yeah. And one of the top things he said for any entrepreneurial ecosystem, you have to have a 20 plus year yeah. view. Yep. And I think <laughs> largely we might only be into it here 15 ish plus yeah. or, of like real concentrated effort. Yeah. 15 years. Our plus first or event wasn't until 11, 12 years ago. Yeah. No, maybe it was 14 years ago at this point. Yeah. But you didn't okay. call it an event then. It was just grabbing beers. That's true. Speaking of which, can yeah. I touch on that real quick? Yeah. Event, conference, event, uh, summit experience what are these things mm -hmm. i think that's also up for debate yeah i don't think there will be a rally conference much longer or even in year two Ooh. i think the word conference maybe we should stricken that word mm. what do you why mean? is that i think it's old school yeah it is old school. The, the way we innovate today is very vibrant it's very it's very fluid yeah conference feels a little static Okay. It feels like you're sitting in, it just feels a little static. It feels well, a little old school. If you're looking for someone to run the music festival piece of rally in the future, yeah. I might I might be able to book some talent for you. Let's roll. Yes. Come on, step it up. Let's, oh, seriously, I think that's, that's another piece we're going to add. Because no one says South by Southwest Conference. Right. They did. I feel like people did say a little bit rally conference yeah. or going to, like, or the rally, which was really interesting. And kinda, you I didn't know, hear that one. That's oh, awesome. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to the rally. And I was like, oh, okay. That's pretty <laughs> cool. The rally. Uh, but I think that all of that... What makes it, in my mind, from the 26-year-old perspective, is like South by Southwest, I think of, yes, there, like some people don't even think of it as a like businessy conference. There's the music and the movies and because all the Because it started, stuff. I think, with music. That's, it started with the arts. It started yeah. with the arts. Yeah. And then and the and other they, stuff came they, in years later. Interactive later. Mm -hmm. later. Yeah. Which and is, now it's a fest. I, I think of it as a festival. A festival. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which that's is right. really, that's fun for them. And, and I've heard great things. I haven't made it down, but I think I'm going to go this March and check it out and, and go down there. And we got to get you down about. there. Yeah. I mean, I've heard it's a good time. Our boys at the Midwest house will be posted up. Yep. This is more of a tactical one, but were you talking about events, conferences, summits, the list goes on and on. It's crowded, especially getting people to your, uh, I'm going to say that, to your soiree, right? <laughs> How do you get people, what's your number one tip or a couple tips or strategies to get people to show up? Cause that's hard. Every, every two days, it's feel like new invite for this new invite for that. How do you get people to show up to your event? I think we touched on it a little bit, which is starting with the why, like why show up? Why are we doing this? Why this event? Why now? And if you don't answer those questions, people aren't going to show up. And I think one of the things that we can talk about marketing tactics and things like that, I think rally did a tremendous job with that, but I think you can't, all the best marketing tactics in the world won't work if you don't have the why down and like your key messaging first. You can have a TikTok video go viral and put powder keg pitch night at the end, but if it's not compelling and there's not supporting content as to like why come to this, people aren't going to show up. And so 
the, I, I do think starting with the why is probably the most important thing. And very frequently, unfortunately, in startup land, people can like skip over that part. The why? Mm-hmm. Just because startups. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I would it's say like, like, that's not a compelling why. <laughs> right. It's not differentiated to, to your point yeah. of. You yeah. have to be def- differentiated and say, this doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Or it doesn't exist yet here. That, yeah. That's part of how Powder Keg came to be. I was spending a lot of time on the West Coast in New York. And when we started really ramping up our pitch events, I was getting a lot of inspiration from other markets where this stuff had maybe been You're, going on that's for a few right. years. I, I, I was in this ecosystem before you were, right? Just age difference. Yeah. And I don't recall anything like what you started existing no. before you started it. No, it, it absolutely didn't. And there's a group called Hackers and Founders out in the Bay Area, still being run by Jonathan Nelson out there. And we were largely influenced by that. Yep. Let, let's get the people building stuff, the hackers, quote unquote, yeah. and the founders, the people who are the CEOs. And now those two people aren't, it's not always, it's not mutually two, it's not always yeah. two different people. But that was a lot of the growth of the ecosystem came when we adopted that mentality of, okay, let's broaden this beyond entrepreneurs and yep. start like inviting builders into the room. Yep. And then eventually, because those people were there, guess who started to show up? Investors, right? Because yep. if this is where things are happening on the ground floor, that's right. Wh- where do you want to be if you're an investor? You want to be on the ground floor or you want to be trying to get into the round of funding yeah. when it's too late? Yeah. And, and not only meeting those people, then also with the time savings. Yeah. So you can go there in one night and two, three hours That's and meet right. a dozen and, and like legitimately meet and have yeah. a chance to chat with a dozen people that would take you three months to try to schedule those coffee chats and this, that, and the yeah, other. I think that is a key thing to remember when you're being invited to events is yes, you, the initial buy-in is the, the programming or the person, but there's, it's like the iceberg, right? That's the little like 10% at the top, but going to these events, going to these conferences, going to these whatever you want to call them, right? It's all the value happens like down downstream below the surface, in my opinion, like just from going to a bunch of events. It's the creative collisions. Yeah. There's a, there we go. And I think our why in the early days before, before we even had a hundred attendees it, during that first year, I think the why was how do we make Indianapolis a place where it's fun, collaborative and easier to start high growth, venture scale startups. Yep. And everyone got behind that. And it, it wasn't just about them, even though it started in a very self, in a very selfish way of, I wanted to pitch my startup and get feedback. Beyond that, it was really, hey, I'm gonna show up to this event and I, I'm gonna get something out of it. But the real why is I wanna help my community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that, Matt. And, and the way I think about Rally is the concept of open source code. Yeah. When that started coming around and people were like, oh, that's crazy. Open source code. Like, why would you do that? For those that don't know what open source code is, can you probably can do a better definition of it. Well, open source is really cool because it's like the intersection of technology and community. Yeah. And open source is literally rather than a, a technology being proprietary and a walled garden where people don't really know what's going on and you have to pay to play. Open source is a collaborative concept where at least if you're thinking like a software language or you're thinking a platform like WordPress is open source, that means a whole community of technologists and builders can contribute and help make this uh, bigger, better. Yeah, Yeah, it's moving faster. It's like the old days of Wikipedia. Was that like one of the original like open sources where everyone from around could just content? Yeah, could just put- Exactly, which by the way, was started by an Indiana IU grad. No way. Yeah, founder of Wikipedia. Do you remember who? I'm blanking on the name right now. That's awesome. But Nate's looking it up and, and I'm going I'm to be kicking myself at the moment. I I think I remember hearing that actually. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy Wales or yeah. Larry Sanger? Jimmy Wales, IU grad. All mm-hmm. right, well, I'll, I'll shoot him a DM. I think I'm getting that right. That's awesome. I, but I, I know I know he was. He spoke down at the Combine once, which was a mm. Bloomington, Indiana conference that's been going for a few oh, years. Oh yeah, it's great. Okay. Um, so, so I want to draw a correlation oh, real quick. Yeah, open source code. yeah let, let him f- finish open source. I, I stole the mic. So the, that's all good. So the it's, uh, same concept. And when did that start? 20 uh, years? Did, which thing? So open source code. Kind open of, source kind of, code. Did it really take off? Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it, been, it's it, a concept that's definitely been around for yeah, a while. It's been around for a long time. The, co- and the, the concept back to the community, everybody can move faster, more efficiently, better. And so that's how I envision rally. So Envision Rally is an open source experience, an open source festival. And, and we already experienced this in the first year. But Rally is specifically built so that if you have a, your own brand, your own event or conference or summit or whatever it might be, 
and you want that to be open sourced and part of something bigger, if you're listening to this, mm-hmm. come on, you're invited. And, and we're not trying, we're not asking you to give up your brand. And so we already had this happen in year one where I went, where ITIA, the Generators Ag Conference, they all plugged into Rally yeah. and were part of this our awards group. ceremony. Your awards, the Powder Keg Awards. Which we did up on our own for yeah. a number of years. Yeah. So all those people plugging into something even bigger, it just makes everything better. Yeah. And so I've never been a fan of thiefdoms or people who want to maintain control at all costs. That will suffocate anything good faster than anything, faster than anything else. I- I think this is the biggest challenge in tech communities yep. today, tech startup innovation communities today. Yep. Having visited hundreds of communities, not just in the U.S., but worldwide, the fiefdoms and thiefdoms is the biggest barrier to really unlocking growth yes. in a community. The people who have the power in the community don't open it up because they want to try to maintain control, yep. control, which is just impossible yep. long-term yep. in a startup community. Yeah, it's going to fail for sure. It's just a matter of when. Yep. Is it tomorrow or next year? Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Because that's not the age we're living in. We're living right. in the age of the internet. Yep. You don't need permission yep. to make stuff happen. You don't yep. need permission to host an event. Yeah. You can just do it. That's right. And I love that about Rally. I think that is unlike any conference, festival, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever attended just how collaborative it wasn't just collaborative hey if you want to do this you proactively and i see you the royal you the elevate team was proactive about saying hey hi alpha do you want to be a part of this how do you want to contribute i would how do you want to contribute itia how do you want to we want you involved i thought that was really powerful and and um compelling yeah I, i i i um i don't know how to operate any other way yeah. I just don't. Um, it's too hard to operate with your arms folded and your lips pursed. It just is, right? <laughs> so I think more... that there's something in human nature, though, that it's like you almost have to evolve past. I don't. I think humans haven't evolved past it yet. Let go of some predetermined unknown fear. And yeah, I think it won't like, happen I, anyway. I think it's our primate or like lizard brain <laughs> that's fight or flight. Yeah, you think back yeah. even a hundred. 50 yeah. years ago, it's, this is my land. Yeah. Like yeah. I can't, if, if you come onto my land, now I can't eat this winter. Yeah. And it's just, I, I, and so I don't want to dismiss it. <laughs> I, that's literally what it is. It's like that concept of trying to constrain resources is like, I, it's in our genes. It's genetic, yeah. but it's for a very different time. We, we are living in a land of abundance right now. In which yeah. uh, open source code was started in 1998. There you go. In case you were 23 years. For everyone who was that was really hung up on that. And in was that, that was that a stat you looked up on Wikipedia? No, I just know that in the back of my <laughs> No, actually I do have Wikipedia up and I looked up the founder of Wikipedia on Wikipedia and then I looked up when did open source code. code so 19 start. 19 what did you say 1998. So 1998 open source code was was founded and in 2023 the idea of open source Events. I love was it. 25 years later. 25 Boom. years later. Let's put that on Wikipedia. Was opened. <laughs> yeah, open right. source events. I love okay. that. Let's talk about that then. You're a year or what? We are just past what we said. Six weeks past. Yep. But the idea was probably around a year, maybe a little less than a year from idea to less activation. Than a year. Less than a so, year. So idea, first conversation to go time to, to walk on stage was 10 months. I should actually. 10 Months. It was 10 months. The actual, the, the real outreach um, outside the community didn't start until late February, March, because we didn't have a website. That's, yeah, so that's six months. Yeah. Okay, six months in, in the go time. Let's talk about, for maybe there's other community builders that want to host an event, a conference, an experience. What is, and Matt, you as well, what's a mistake that was made that if you could guide someone who's, who's hosting a conference, say, hey, I messed this up, fix it, like you do this differently. I'll go first. Uh, go <laughs> Are we doing a four hour I'm like, wh- podcast yeah. today? <laughs> Where do I start? Where do I start? No, sorry. Go ahead, Tove. You got you. I, I won't you. forget mine. You go. After. I would say probably my biggest mistake I made early on was just like, oh yeah, if you know me and we've met, you should come. And so I wasn't as intentional about what you did with Rally, which is going to diff- different stakeholders and groups. Now, granted, there weren't really that many groups in Indiana when we started hosting events, but I could have been more intentional about saying, how do I find more people who don't look exactly like me? How do I be more intentional about filling the room with getting outside of my immediate circle and asking more people to get into their circles and get outside of their circles? 
And there was a time period where I had the, the aha because a couple of people who came to the events were like, hey, you ever notice that there's not many women here at this event? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I get that. But what do you want me to do about it? Because I was a young 20 something. I didn't know those any young 20 something. They're the worst. <laughs> those guys, <laughs> gals. But it, it was really like looking in the mirror and being like, okay, yeah, we are like hosting these events. At that time, it was like a keg and solo cups because that was a cheap way to, to get beer. And it was exploding. Like hundreds of people were coming and I was making Orfello salary and trying to cover the tab for beers. I'm like, oh, but I'm just going to get a keg and some solo cups. Yeah. Well, it starts to look a lot like a frat party. And that isn't necessarily a welcoming environment for everybody. And so I, just making a few tweaks around being intentional about saying, hey, everybody is welcome to this. At, at that point in time, we were really hosting community events and being intentional about saying, hey, we want to get different people like plugged into tech and plugged into entrepreneurship opportunities. They're, the stage is big enough for everybody and just being a little bit intentional. And that's now in the fabric of our DNA at Powder Keg, literally built into our core values at Powder Keg and our culture. But there was a time where it wasn't and it was just very not intentional. It was just, it was organic. And I think that's okay to let those things happen. You don't want to slow down growth artificially, but I would say that was my biggest mistake from day one was being intentional about getting diverse perspectives and, mm -hmm. and diversity in the room. And now almost 15 years later, obviously there's tons of research that shows how that's beneficial to innovation. Having different perspectives is one of the most valuable things that you can have on a team in order to grow and scale, as long as it's an inclusive right. environment. Diversity. I, I think that's a, a great way or a great lesson learned early on. Tove, what do you got? I think sometimes when things are so clear in your mind, um, it's easy to make the assumption that it will just be clear in everyone's mind. And, and when you're dealing with a short timeline, um, and you're so deeply driven by just passion, you know, you can go a little too fast for some stakeholders. Mm -hmm. and, and you just make the assumption that this is a why, this is going to be the world's largest cross-sector innovation, like event, conference, experience, festival. We're going to figure that word out here. Soiree. Yep. Soiree. Nate, Nate's sticking with soiree. No, you might have something there, Nate. Um, but like the why, that's why. It, it's a cross-sector, disparate stakeholders, creative collisions. Like, bam, let's roll. And it's not everybody necessarily thinks that way or, or agrees with that. And you try your best. And what we said early on was, hey, we, we use the word startup. Like, you got to think of this as a startup. Mm -hmm. We are going to make mistakes. People might get upset. None of that is intentional. And hey, if you're upset, just pick up the phone call. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. Right. And we'll try to accommodate whatever. And then, yeah, I, I would say that's that's probably the that's probably the yeah. biggest. I thing. think that's good lessons, good learnings, especially people that are moving fast. Like, that's just for visionary CEOs in general, right? Sometimes it might be clear up in your head, but you're moving fast and thinking that it's just oh, it should be self-explanatory to a lot of people. It's not always that way. I was about so. to say the same thing. I, I feel like I continue to learn that lesson over and over <laughs> as a startup. CEO. And, and by the way, through the experience, mm -hmm. holy cow, we had stakeholders come out of the woodwork and Hey, how about this? How about yeah. that? And we're like, oh, great idea. Great idea. Boom. Incorporate. Well, we I, are, I think I was about to just mm -hmm. double click on that. All of our best ideas at powder keg came from the community. 100%. And that kind of attitude is really exciting because that's how you can build serious yeah. momentum yeah. at powder keg events. We, we introduced the slow clap that just mm -hmm. happened organically one time. Like someone hit their time while they were pitching and someone in the audience just starts. That is awesome. Slow I didn't clap. know that. Yeah. That, <laughs> I didn't start doing that. That's that was sick. like just totally a, a community. Thing. Do you, you remember bring, who that was? I don't remember that is who awesome. that was. We need to bring that I, back. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a developer who was just like, yeah, like I'm over up. this. <laughs> I love it. Guys, I switched up the lightning round today. We're going to be super quick. We're going to go Tof, Matt, Tof, Matt. Yeah. You like that? It's all about events, bucket list or Sorry. <laughs> Lightning round, all about events. I like Tove, bucket list. Who is a bucket list event speaker for you that you haven't had already? Michael Jordan. Bang. Matt? That's on my bucket list, too. No, you can't copy. Michael Jordan? No retweets. On. By the way, Michael, if you're listening, get you're in the rally. Come on, MJ. <laughs> Don't let all those Pacers <laughs> games deter you. <laughs> Michael Jordan's a good one. Bucket list speaker. John Mellencamp. Ooh, he could get in. Indiana guy. Matt, yep. bucket list event venue. Bucket list event venue. Mm, there is a new 
venue that just opened in Las Vegas that was like co-designed by U2. It's literally built for music. Are you talking about the Sphere? It's the Sphere. Yeah. So many big arena tours can only go in like football stadiums. Mm -hmm. But you know, having just gone to the Taylor Swift tour down in Nashville, awesome experience. Acoustics are terrible. Like. You, you, like it, that venue is not where the mm -hmm. Titans play is not built for music. Yep. This thing that you two created, I think there's like thousands of speakers in there and there's That's like sick. literally a 360 spherical LCD. Dope. Uh, it's crazy. Screen. Look it up. I'll link something in the show. Yeah. This is awesome. That's definitely my dream venue. TOF, event, dream event venue, bucket list event venue. I, you know, I was going to say, you mean to, to host an event? To at, host an event at. I'm just going to say the moon. Hell yeah. Let's Damn. go. You but, totally trumped me with that one. Okay. <laughs> final, the moon. Final question of the lightning round. Okay. By the way, there's a company in Austin, Texas okay, that's Elon. building. They're trying to figure out yeah. right now how to use materials yeah. from the moon. Is, is that that's called right. SpaceX? To, no, no, to build uh, just on 60 Minutes. Did you see this? I didn't see it. It's amazing. Did you just say it's on 60? People it, still watch 60 Minutes? I, yes. I was Nate, sitting there bored the other night and I, and I caught it. Yes. <laughs> All right. And Nate. final question of the lightning round. No, no one my age watches 60 Minutes. That, that's like the ultimate Sunday scary. By the way, it's it's literally the minutes is beyond your attention it's span. It's the first 60 minutes I probably watched in five years. There yeah, we go. Like, but I on. saw something cool. Come on, okay. you're building stuff um, on, on the moon. Besides, <laughs> Tove, besides your besides rally, what is a must attend event? The Super Bowl. I love that. Absolutely. I agree. Besides powder keg pitch night, Matt, what is a must attend event? Don't say rally. It's tough because you can't really get tickets right now, at least for this year, but pay attention for when tickets go on sale. Amazing event called Tonic Ball. It's hosted in Fountain Square in Indianapolis. It's literally, I think, four or five different music venues. You can just hop between the, the Hi-Fi, the White Rabbit, the radio, and each stage is dedicated to an artist. So like this year, like Prince is one of the artists, and I'm blanking on what the other artists are, but you see all of these kind of like locally regionally famous bands playing the music of Prince or playing the music of like last year was Jimi Hendrix at radio. <laughs> mm. Just an amazing event and all the money from ticket sales goes to Second Helpings, just an amazing nonprofit here in Indianapolis. That's awesome. Helping that. people fight hunger. Perfect. Yeah. Tonic ball. Gotta go. Gentlemen, thank you for the for the time. It was fun unpacking a little bit into the minds of two event organizers. We're gonna call them event. We're gonna think of a I prefer just to be called rail on, on that front. My, my Soiree. focus is elevate, right? Pushing this ecosystem forward. So just rally. I'm going to sneak in one last Soiree question. Concierges. One last question. Um, how can people support the rally soiree and get involved? Yeah, several ways. So number one, planning has already started for 2024. So be watching out for applying to be a speaker. Be watching out. If you're a founder or entrepreneur, be watching out for when you can apply for the pitch competition. If you host an event or a soiree or a whatever it might be of any type or sort around cross-sector innovation, then we would love to have, invite you to hold that within Rally to make it all bigger and to raise your profile. Mm -hmm. So feel free to reach out uh, on that front as well. And then we want to spool up the music scene at Rally. And we would love to try to start that next year. And it's just bandwidth. So any volunteers that oh, want to take yes. on and launch that component of it. Get me on that board. Sweetwater has reached out and, and they wanted to see how they can get more involved. So I think there's a lot of like, yeah, Mike, if you're listening, we're open to this. We're excited about it. So dates, August 27th through the 29th, 2024. Mark your calendar. You can go buy early bird prices are available. Check out rallyinnovation.com. Check out the shirts, get there, get in on rally. The early bird prices are obscene too. It's like I think the price just went up October now's 1st. The, now's the time. Dude, it's true. They're, they're I mean, gonna just keep going up. We it's did still a, 30, a 30 day crazy talk, I and I'm know. like, I don't even know if they should. I don't know. That's pretty low. Yeah. Um, but what is it now? Look real, real time. I clicked one, to one ninety nine. One forty. One forty nine. That's student. So two. Oh, that's student. Two ninety nine. Yeah. Regular price is nine ninety nine. Yeah. Get there. Get in on rally, yeah. gentlemen. Thanks for the time. This has been Get In, a Powder Kick production in partnership with Elevate Ventures. And we want to hear from you. If you have suggestions for our guest or segment, reach out to Matt or Nate on LinkedIn or on email. To discover top tier tech companies outside of Silicon Valley in hubs like Indiana, check out our newsletter at powderkeg.com slash newsletter. And to apply for membership to the Powder Keg executive community, check out powderkeg.com slash premium. 
We'll catch you next time and next week as we continue to help the world get in. Since you just listened to this podcast, you might be thinking about starting one for your company. Lucky for you, our partners over at Casted have you covered. Casted is the first and only podcast and video marketing platform made specifically for B2B brands. I love this about them. The platform makes it possible to publish, syndicate, amplify, and measure the value of your podcast and video content. In fact, we use it for our podcast here at Powder Keg. And if you're a startup, you should listen up because Casted for Startups is definitely for you. They are offering exclusive deep discounts of up to 82% off retail price for qualifying startups. Connect with Casted at casted.us slash powderkeg.